Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello halal family Welcome to the channel I hope you guys are having yourself a wonderful day In today's video we're going to be reacting to Mark Wayne trying Indonesian food This video was suggested by Hattori Hanzo Thank you very much for taking the time to send me a recommendation and suggestion Stay tuned guys, we'll be right back with a video Welcome back guys, we're gonna get started with the video momentarily and at the end of the video I'll be sharing with you my observation and reaction so please make sure you stay until the end. With that said, we're gonna get started with our video. When my friend Andre invited me to attend a royal Balinese family gathering to experience authentic Balinese food and culture, I hardly even knew what to expect, but I was thrilled. What you're about to watch in this video is the real deal. It doesn't get better than this for authentic culture and Indonesian food in Bali. Hey everyone, it's Mark Wiens. I'm in Bali, Indonesia. Andre should be arriving soon and we're gonna first walk around the market. Hello there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mark. So we're gonna be going around with Andre today and this is gonna be a really unique and very interesting of course. opportunity to observe Balinese culture. Of course. I'm looking forward to it. Sip. Welcome to Bali, guys. And this is a... Typical Balinese market, you'll find all sorts of like jungle vegetables there, bananas and coconuts. Oh, you'll see a lot of flowers, beautiful colored flowers, and these are all used as as offerings. So we're off to Bokasa. We still, you know, believe in social stratification. So we still believe in caste. So basically in okay. Bali have a four grade of social certification. In the top level, we call it uh, Brahmana. So we're going to the pl place for the royal palace, for the great port, Satria. Your family is part of the royal yeah. royal caste. Uh, my name is Agung Andri. So basically okay. my family's name is Agung Putra. Okay. But my mom is half blood. My mom is from Dutch. Ah, and all my right. father is from Bali. Every royal person in Bali, you starting with Gung. With okay. Agung. Okay. So Gung Andre, Gung maybe if I'm the royal family, Gung Andi or something. So, so start with Agung. So welcome to my crib. Thank you. Oh so this is this is like a this is a temple and also where you live. One thing I just wanna quickly tell you is that the majority of Indonesia is Muslim, but Bali is the is the unique island where the majority of people are Hindu. We're walking into the compound now. This is absolutely beautiful. You can feel the Balinese culture here. And one thing that I have to show you is this tree right here. As soon as I stepped in the gates of this compound, I got the aroma to my nose. This is the hugest durian tree I've ever seen in my life. You can just smell the aroma of durian in this whole compound. So please sit down. Thank you. This is Bli, Bli Serbli? Nyoman. Bli Nyoman. Stop in here. Balinese uh, Royal Compound have uh, several categories for uh, living. So we call it here Bali Daje. Bali Daje is for the old grand father and the old brother. Uh -huh. This is for an VVIP, this building. Smart, this building. Okay. And this one we call Saran Gede. Friend and colleague. <laughs> yeah. They can stay yes. over there. Perfect. Okay. Hi, Hi, nice, to Hi nice to meet you. Uh, the CEO here? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is an entire royal Balinese traditional compound and it is absolutely beautiful. I am just I'm just amazed at the architecture, the buildings, the the community. Mark using the star rolling. <laughs> Which is a traditional uh, form of dress in Bali. So this is for uh, you know wrapping. Okay. We call it slender. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you immediately, a sarong is much more comfortable than pants. Oh, that airflow is fantastic. And we are now gonna go take a look in the, the family temple. Well, and we have ceremony every six months in Bali, usually, okay. yeah? 
and then that one is the Surya. Most of the family, local family, come here to pray. This is literally right off the tree that is that we're sitting in the shade Oops. of. Oh, it's beauty. And oftentimes the small durians are the most fragrant and have the most flavor. Fell from the tree, so this is natural. This is organic. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's mm. insane. It has the perfect hint of yeah. bitterness. Yeah, perfect hint of bitterness. Just that slight alcoholic taste. Yeah. And so sweet oh. and creamy. That's a durian. You don't want you don't want to use any napkin at all. You want to lick everything off your fingers. Lilith satay is very, very common in Bali and it's very, very comfort food for Balinese. Okay. And then after that, we're going to make a lawar. And then after that, this, you know, it's a, a fresh water eel. Yeah. Fresh it's from a the oven. life. Still, still alive. Yeah. And we're going to get started cooking. He's going to make a number of different traditional Balinese dishes. Palm sugar. So satay with yeah. chicken. Chicken. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, chicken. Okay. The first dish that he's making is the satay lili, which is a famous Balinese style satay using minced meat. And he's using minced chicken. So he first chopped up some kaffir lime leaves, then he added, chopped up some palm sugar, added that in, then he added some chilies, which I think have been kind of roasted or fried before. There's some turmeric, he added in some salt. Oh, and onto yeah. lemongrass. They, they take a little wad of the, of the minced meat mixture and really delicately, well, they do it really fast, but I know if you or I tried that, we would probably end up with a, a, a clump somewhere or it would just fall off the, the skewer. Banana stem. Banana ah. Stem. Okay. Banana stem soup. Yeah. Really finely sliced the banana stock. And then he stuck it into the basin and he took his hands and kind of we kind of like pulled them apart. Then he added a spoonful of salt and then he really mixed, mixed it up and kind of squashed it, massaged it with his hands. And then he squeezed it all to let out all of that water and all, all that excess moisture, I think just water uh, within that stump. And then he added in the, the classic uh, Balinese spices, the, the mix of turmeric and galangal and ginger. And he added in a few more herbs and spices and then he added in a few a few pieces of chicken chopped it up chicken in there to to make the the soup stock that's going to be the the base of the soup Oh, that's right out of the yeah. boiling. Oh, that's hot. Yes, very good. Oh, you can taste the lemongrass in there really nicely. Yeah. Sour wine, but it's already sold by the owner for using for villa or something. So this fresh water eel is going to be like an animal for indicator for the healthy soil, for the healthy environment. Ah. Yeah. So if you ever buy land in Bali, you want to make sure there's eels within the land. Yeah. Sour lindo. Sour. Sour lindo. He is an absolute master of cooking. It's a little bit uh, graphic to show you, but uh, it's really the traditional way. And they sat in the hot water for a while, and now he is de-gutting the, the eels just by hand, like he's reaching in, 
kind of removing the head and then just sliding his thumb through the body and just removing that inner guts section. And they sort of like kind of puff up when you put them in the oil. That dish is complete? Yeah, complete. The eels came out of the hot oil. They're all crispy and they've really reduced down. He mixed it with that toasted coconut and that is a an eel dish complete. Oh, five man. star chef, you know? Yeah, he is a five star chef. A lot of the ingredients right here on the compound. What leaf is that? Bay leaf. Ah, ah, it's bay leaf. local bay leaf. We call it down salam. Ah, okay. His chopping skills are just insane. He, he chops up things, minces things in just an instant. And he minced that up, now he's adding the spices. Again, that same turmeric mixture goes into almost all Balinese dishes. That is the signature ingredient. And then he also added these, which are, these are Balinese, Balinese bay leaves. He took that chicken mixture and now he's folding them into little banana leaf pockets and he does it so fast and so expertly and then he ties them up with a, a very thin strips of bamboo that are sharp enough to poke through. After he filled everything into the banana leaf and wrapped them up, it's gonna be steamed and it's called tum. Uh, durian fruit. Oh. <laughs> right from the tree. Yes. Wow. You are very lucky. <laughs> that is awesome. This is a paradise of food. <laughs> oh. Oh, it smells incredible and that is extremely sharp. Oh wow. That's a beauty. The fire is hot, so he just put on one batch of the sape and you can hear them hissing over the fire and already you can just smell the aroma of that lemon dress just coming out. Do you have a try or later? Right off the fire, they are ready. I'm gonna taste test. How is it going, Mark? Oh. <laughs> oh wow. It's amazing. Oh, it's so fragrant. It's so tender and juicy. And you can really taste the fragrance, the essence of that lemongrass, which is just like embedded throughout it. Oh, that's outstanding. Another dish we're making is a lawar. And a lawar is a Balinese like mix, kind of kind of salad. And we're gonna be making it with uh, young jackfruit. It's gonna be mixed up with this uh, chopped up coconut. And another ingredient to make the loar extra tasty is some boiled chicken skin. That's some coconut milk? Yeah. Some curry? Yeah. Stuff? Okay. He really mixed it up with his hands. That's a really common technique for cooking Balinese food. And then he added in all the, the minced jackfruit and then in some more chilies. And that technique, it looks incredible. Oh, oh you can taste the chicken juices in there too. I just sat in the kitchen in awe as they literally went from complete raw ingredients to a royal Balinese feast. And now they're just gonna plate everything up and I think it's almost time for lunch, but that food is gonna be mind blowing. So we watched the entire process of making them, them making this food from literally from scratch from the raw ingredients to a royal Balinese feast and just the presentation is beautiful and Andre was already explaining to me that you can see that the rice which is a, a cone like a mountain shape and it represents the mountains yes. and the, the nature of yes. Bali which is so important 
of course, in Balinese culture. These are royal coconuts. Yes. He took out the, the coconut water and then he filled it with the soup. That's the banana stock soup that he prepared, that we saw him prepare. I think I gotta move in for a piece of that eel first with some of the peanuts. Mm. Oh. Oh. It's damn good. The eels are just completely crispy. And then you have that incredible fragrance of that toasted um, mm. coconut in there. Okay, next up for the lawar. And can you mix the sambal whenever you, yeah. you want? I'm gonna get some of this. Yeah. This is sambal? Yeah. Yes, okay, yes, with yes. chilies and shallots in there. I'm gonna mix a little sambal mbo. Sambal mbo. Okay. Mbo. Yeah, mbo is a balinese uh, thing to the shallot, fried shallot. Mm. Oh. Oh, it's just, it's just flavor, impressive flavors. You can really taste the coconut in there. Then I love that addition of that sambal. You got that roasted chili in there, a little bit of heat. And very balanced. Yes, definitely. And the shallots in there too yeah. make it amazing. Oh, you can taste the fragrance of that bay leaf so nicely in there. And then also you do really taste the, the banana leaf as well, which has been kind of steamed and embedded. We have some spoons for the soup. The presentation is just awesome. And this is the ares we call it. It's so incredibly good. Um, you can taste, again, the turmeric in there really nicely. There's garlic in there. And the banana stump, actually, sometimes I've had banana stump that's kind of like chewy almost and kind of like um, slimy. Yeah. But because of the process of how he made it, he squeezed out all the, the water. We're adding kind of salt mm -hmm. and then for really and squeezed all, the, it, yeah. all that uh, all that water up. It's really like crisp, almost like celery. Oh. It's just dish after dish of of excitement in your mouth. Okay, and finally the satay, which I've already had a satay lilit, yeah, which I already had a taste of, and I can already verify that it is out of controllably good, perfect one biters. <laughs> Your mouth just fills with like, like burnt roasted lemongrass flavor. It's so good. The flavors are so well pronounced, so, so balanced and so layered. And also watching them prepare the entire, every, every dish and then eating it, that also adds to the, yeah. to this, to, the, to, to how special this meal is. And what I like, is that every dish is unique as well. Even though some of the similar spices are used in all the dishes, every dish has a different composition. That was absolutely incredible food. It was quite a, quite a, quite a bit of food on that platter too, but oh man, it was so good. I love that mix of flavors, those Balinese spices. I'm fascinated and my mouth is just rejoicing right now. This bifrits called Deluman is, you know, is a leaf. It's very good for your gastric. We've got two different desserts, traditional Balinese desserts. I'll try the lak lak first, which is a little rice flour cake uh, with palm sugar and shredded coconut on top. And you can see, oh, it's like, they're kind of like yeah. kettle cakes, right? They're kind of roasted on yeah. the, in a griddle. Mm. That's a pretty big bite. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. It like has that, that bottom smoky crust and it's sort of gooey on the top. And then you can really taste that fresh coconut as well as that that like syrupy, almost like molasses-y palm sugar on top. And these are, you can see these are like really kind of wobbly jellies within coconut water and coconut. You gotta make sure it doesn't fall out of your spoon. And then, Oh, it's really wobbly. And then, okay, I think I got a bite. Mm. Whoa. That's like a, a texture that will just like slide around in your mouth. I've tried a lot of Southeast Asian little snacks and desserts, but this is very unique. 
And that texture is just so interesting. Look at that. It's just like the softest jelly you've ever tasted. We had some pre-meal durian and we're having some second dessert durian as well. And this is the durian that fell from the tree. We actually, when we were doing the cooking, we heard a boom, a thump on the ground and it fell from the tree. It's completely natural. It's organic. That's the way you have to eat durian. Like oftentimes uh, for the markets these days, they'll pick them premature, <laughs> unripe, and then they have to like quickly ripen them in unnatural ways but the best of the best durian is when it just falls naturally from the tree it's naturally ripened another durian wrinkly wrinkly beauty yeah Marshall, that was pretty interesting you know at the beginning they were preparing the food as well as cooking it so it brought a lot of memories because back home and in afghanistan similarly if there was an event you would see people getting together preparing the the veggies and the food and they would cook it in an area where you'd see like the smoke has made it uh, black and uh, so it brought a lot of uh, memories of uh, back home the one part uh, that you guys might have uh, noticed me when there was the baby eel or small eels that they were preparing. Afghanistan is a landlocked uh, country, so there's not a lot of water around it. So for that reason, I'm not accustomed to eating uh, eel and, uh, you know, I'm just not used to it. So I can't uh, watch it, but there's, there's nothing wrong and there's no disrespect to, for example, people who do. It's just that I'm not used to it. Uh, but overall, I, I liked all the preparation. The preparation of the food looked really, really good. And I like the idea of putting the chicken on the lemongrass, which probably gives it a lot of more uh, flavor. And I noticed that in Indonesia, there's a lot of um, coconut, for example, gets used in a lot of the cuisine, especially in the dessert. So that I think I'm going to love because I really, really like coconut. And uh, if it's in the dessert, it's it's perfect. So this, this was, was really, really cool. I like the fact that, for example, in Bali, its majority is uh, Hindus. And uh, this is the reason that I've been trying to learn more about uh, Indonesia because uh, I, I love the, the people and how they're tolerant uh, towards each other and inshallah I want to see if one day if I have a voice to influence the youth of Afghanistan uh, I would like to show them for example these um, these examples so that way they understand you know that we can all live in harmony mashallah Indonesia has over 230 million population where Afghanistan only has 32 so Afghanistan is much smaller we should be able to for example get along with each other right um, and uh, you know in this case like Swala you see in Indonesia different religions everybody's loving one another and we can do that uh, out there too right I think we need to focus more on our similarities rather than, rather than on the differences that we might have so thank you very much guys for suggesting this video I hope you liked it if you did please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe if you like me to check out another video Please put in the comment section below. As always, thank you very much for all your love and support. I hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and your family. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and we'll see you then.